Football Picture. And then uh, Todd Treffert and Edward Savagin, Phil Lasco, uh, John Gaynor, who is also in action in TA. So he's got a busy day today, big man. So uh, he's going to take, he's gonna, what, a, what a juxtaposition. He's going to go from a Devon to a TA modern yeah. car. I love it. Edward Savagin, unfortunately, has dropped out, but here comes the green flag, Jonathan. All right, here we go then. And do we know where Todd is? Green flag waves then for our first group race of the day. Group 6 and 12A as they fly towards the first corner here at Sebring, which is a classic. You take a nice wide berth around the outside and then duck dive into the inside. And away we go. Yeah, Phil Lasco didn't quite get the start that he uh, had yesterday, and it looks like Gary Moore popped up to the front in that GT350. Phil Lasco next to John DeGainer, and then Kurt Vogt and John DeGainer going at it. Now, uh, Gary Moore, Kurt Vogt, John DeGainer are all basically in, and actually uh, that Shelby uh, 500 are all in the uh, same, uh, The sorry, Seth Bridget are, are all in the same canopy, so we're going to under the same tent, so we're going to see what happens here. Well, this they come is fun. to Cube 3, turn 7. Phil Lasco has the modern brakes. Yeah, and the modern modern Mustang, as it were. Cobra. Away they go, down the Fangio straight, and yes, he used those modern brakes to good use there. Phil Lasco in the Mustang. But not getting away from the older version that quickly, is he? Mm -hmm. No, no, those GT350s, you know, the... the Power hasn't changed that much, really. Yeah. You know, uh, that hasn't evolved like it did because they're still running about the same displacements, just per the rules. But, uh, you know, it's in the braking, the handling, the just overall geometry of these cars. There's Kurt Vogt. You said Cobra he's the Automotive. Cobra Automotive. He runs yeah. that, does he? He's the, yeah, he's the owner, operator of Cobra Automotive, president of the Shelby Club. Looks like we got some fuel venting out of the left there. Ah, no problem. That's out of the fuel cell. That is normal. That's just... Uh, uh, they just wanted to make sure they finished this race. We are adding longer races than they're used to, so they're filling them to the top to make sure they can make it. Well, uh, here he is, the, the top end of the circuit before you head down that long Ullman Strait, and that's where you really stretch the legs of these muscle cars, both modern and traditional or historic, as we like to say. We've got some comments from Jerry Robinson, who won our Amateur Mechanic of the Year last night. And you remember Jerry, last year when we were here, he lost his rear wing and was kind of crab walking down, oh, that, yeah, 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 down yeah. that shot there. Now there's John DeGainer in that beautiful Devon. Devin. Jerry Robinson, thanks for joining us. We miss you, but uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you soon. That Devin bouncing over the curbs there. It's very, very tough, that last corner. You're going hard right. The car is trying to shift you wide and you're trying to hold on to it and meanwhile there's bumps galore side by side action again here but through goes the 80 my favorite in this field i said yesterday ooh, seth burgett oh he's going wide whoa too wide hold on to it seth ah uh, he's gonna hit your mission foods whoa he did oh nicely did he miss it he missed it look at oh, that oh man you're getting an award, Seth. Nice job. Wow, that was good. Even the Juan Gonzalez, I think, will be happy with that. Mr. Yeah. Banner. Free like bag it. of chips for Seth. Yeah, absolutely. And but also, he kept it out of the wall, which is very <laughs> more hard to importantly, do there. Yeah. So, yeah. He was at speed, that's for sure. I think he'll take that. But he did go the extra effort to miss my uh, sign there. So we I appreciate so. that as we look high above. Now, these are two teammates, Rene Tercilla and John Strauss. Rene Tercilla, longtime racer with us with Griffin Motorsports. South Florida, but absolutely beautiful car, very well prepared, very fast driver. Yeah, I hadn't realized how big Griffin kind of is. It's been yeah. it's been going a while, hasn't it? They're racing for sixth and seventh position. Ray Lizza, uh, Zizza is in uh, eighth position, and then James Glass ninth, and Bradley Steele running out the ten top ten. Phil Manson saying he loves that Golf livery there and that Shelby GT yeah, five hundred. Now my list says it's a GT five hundred. That would be AP. My grid sheet says it is a GT350, which yeah. would put them in B production. Well, didn't he say it was a 500? Because it says GT500 on the plate. Yeah. When he was showing us the back of it, it says yeah. GT500. And so it raced here. 71 and, and 72. Yeah, yeah, how cool is that? Now, yeah. there's Ray Zisa in that, uh, you know, there's something about yellow Corvettes at Sebring. Just so much history with those CompuWare cars. So yep, it's really yep. cool to see them there as they go through Bennett, Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend. Oh, you got it. First yeah. time round. I'm trying. I was tongue-tied and twisted like a certain Pink Floyd lyric. I know. Uh, what song is that? 
Uh, but uh, let's see here. If our commenters know what song that is. Oh. As John DeGainer, look at that, coming outside of Kurt Vogt. A little bit better handling as that dev. Learning to fly. I think it's comfortably numb. No. But it might be. I don't know. Maybe our commenters know. We'll find. We've got some. We've got to have some Floyd fans out there. How's this for some Corvette history with Ray Zisa followed by Jim Glass? A couple decades between those two Corvettes. Yeah, no kidding. A few changes. Uh, Voigt's now fourth position. DeGainer drops to third. Phil Lasko now leads from Gary Moore. Strauss up to fifth. To, uh, Rene Tassilla is sixth. Ooh. Jim Glass getting on the binders there. Saw what was happening. Nice job from Jim. But that was kind of a f nearly full speed braking there. That gets dangerous in those bumps. Well, this seems to be the battle. Our camera crew is picking this up perfectly. Yeah. That's Bradley Steele in that 1967 Chevrolet Camaro. Followed by Jim Glass. So, unfortunately, Scott Shadle is not out there today, and I, I called him Tom Shadle yesterday, but his name is Scott Shadle. Scott, sorry about that. Man, Ooh. look at that thing move. Oh, okay. Oh, that was a mistake. Oh. Yeah. You heard the squeal of the tires underneath him. Yeah, Mikey that races. seems to be like a little bit too hard on the brakes, and it, you could see it really affected the balance. Seth Berg at that in the uh, 500. So Lasko continuing to lead here. This is our Group 6 and Group 12. We'll have several groups in action today, and our feature race coming up straight after this, which is the TA, SGT, XGT, and GT Trans Am. Now, you know how I love my awkward. So I put the mic in his wife's face and said, where in the house? And she said, it can go in the garage. It can go in his office. <laughs> and she named everywhere but the house. I love that. I love it. Yeah, I bet that's a, a contentious moment uh, <laughs> when, when you, you arrive back with your plastic prize. Well, no, these are, when you win a championship, you win a pretty big cup trophy. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty coveted thing, and he worked really hard to win that six GT championship last year. Could you put flowers in year. it? Could you what? put flowers in it, maybe? You could put flowers in it, yeah. Okay. It would hold a bottle of champagne with ice. There you go. Now, now, now you're thinking. Beautiful shots here. You can really see when they get on the brakes by the car just kind of dipping. Yeah. And, and as you roll in, this is a great shot to see how this sud sud. Yeah, uh, see how high up that car is. And yeah. they set it up, and then it dips down like that. Yeah. That's on the brakes because they have to set it up higher here than anywhere else. I was talking to uh, JJ with uh, Tommy Dreese's crew, like the, the shock expert in the paddock. And mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, this is the softest Wait, setup we shot. have. How about that with the plane landing just behind? Yeah, look at that shot. Nice work, Mr. Cameraman. Cessna coming behind him. I think that's big Ron. Do Ron Ron. And again, into Sunset they go, the Mission Food Sunset corner. That's the number 38, Bradley Steele. And I think I love all these uh, particular, that's the Chevrolet Camaro, but all these sort of historic Trans Am, as I like to call them. And of course, there is an official historic Trans Am group that uh, convenes around America. Very strong group, too. It's priceless cars they run. Very privileged to have uh, been part of watching them. And go you're absolutely their right because they're they're categorized as Group Six TA. That means yeah. Trans Am. Trans -Am. So they're set up to the specifications of Trans Am from 1966 to 1972. That's the Don Yount and uh, Bradley Steele. Yeah. Well, Don Yount actually was here a couple of weeks ago testing a modern Trans Am car. I think for Tommy Dreese. Oh, that's cool. So always nice to always nice to have him doing and do, going about his paces, as it were. We have the legend John Gore's line looking over our shoulder, John. That's a so scary thing. But you're welcome to come in and watch, John. And he's a <laughs> longtime supporter with the Dyson Racing Team, Chris yep. Dyson. So, yeah, it's great to have. You know, seat. it's cool to come to Sebring and have these little family reunions like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to you wanna grab a headset and talk with us a little bit? No. He, he he's taking no. a back seat. I like the hat. But uh, John races a, uh, a true English mini with us. Mini ah, Cooper. good man. At uh, Watkins Glen, so so you know we're good friends. Both like our British sports cars. Gotta love them. Thank you. Oh, we get Vince as well. Look at that. That's awesome. That's a that's a hell of a move. So that's Victor Corda there in that 1966 Ford Mustang fastback. 
66 to 67, I think, is still my favorite era of the Mustang, especially in the fastback. And then Rick Ortman, who won a championship with us last night, his Group 12 championship in that 1992 Chevrolet Corvette. But one time I was editing a video in the, in the hotel lobby at Coda, and he and his wife were staying there, and it showed some historic Trans Am footage. And we were able to find him and his friend uh, in the like pit paddock. He raced in the Trans Am series back in the in the early 70s, I believe. Wow. And now back here with us in a Group 12 car. How cool is that? Yep. Uh, my co-commentator in Superbike, Steve Martin, bought a 1967 Ford Mustang uh, Fastback and rebuilt it. Bought it in the States, then had it uh, sent over to Melbourne, Australia, and he rebuilt it at home. And uh, so he's roaring around Melbourne right now in one of those. That is awesome. Doesn't so, yeah. race it, but he but he does enjoy it. Yeah, Rick Ortman there in the back in that Corvette. But yeah, this this basically looks like Trans Am here back when they started in 1966. Yeah. No kidding. Back when they did the FIA standing starts in Trans Am. That's right. Could you imagine if we did that these days? I think it'd be fun. It might, would be might fun. Might be a bit of a struggle, but it'd be fun once. <laughs> once. Yeah, like we found out an Indy car in the first Grand Prix at Indy, the uh, the road course at Indy. Then this Cobra. We're showing that Cobra uh, today at the grid because that is Stephen Shoddy or Shoddy. Stephen, I'm sorry, I don't know the proper pronunciation I'd say of your last name. But that's a Group 6 AP 1965. Beautiful. But it's it's that basically brushed, brushed aluminum. aluminum. Yeah. If he polished the aluminum, it would be a competitive advantage because it would blind the other drivers. Completely. And, and he'd be able to do his hair. And then Lewis there in that Group 6 B production, 1968 Chevrolet Corvette with Edward Savagin and the Concierge Motorsports folks helping him out. Absolutely vintage racing Corvette experts. Yeah, I was about to say, is, the Savagins uh, are yeah. the, the doyens, if you like, in, in the Dow, certainly in the uh, Texas yeah. uh, for the Corvette, right? Yeah, and they're, with, uh, they're, they're in Dallas. They'll be with us here in a few weeks at Eagles Canyon with Concierge Motorsports. So uh, look for Lewis to really move up as he, as he progresses through this. But I love the headlights on these cars, that 68, yeah. 69 Very body. Very distinctive, isn't it? But it looks like he's, he's wheeling pretty well. And we have the classic Cobra versus Corvette battle happening yep. right here. Nice work. Yeah. So he, Lasco, that is. Phil Lasco has increased that lead now to, what, six and a half seconds over Gary Moore uh, in the Mustang. Uh, so it's Mustang versus Shelby at the front. Again, is still uh, going strong in the Devlin in third position. And then Voigt in fourth. Strauss to Silverberg. Uh, Zizas dropped down to eight. Steel and Glass rounding out the top ten. Yeah, this is a nice little battle here. Ooh, we've got Eric Cartman joining us again. Eric, we missed you last season. We didn't see you very much. But he says, will you guys be at Laguna Seca May 3rd through the 5th? Yes, the... Mission Foods Laguna Seca Speed Tour. Notice that it's through uh, May 3rd through the 5th, which means we're going to be celebrating Cinco de Mayo out ah. there at the Mission Foods Laguna Seca, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca Speed Tour. So uh, expect some special festivities happening out there. Love going to WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Always some great competition, especially in the historic Trans Am and B Sedan classes in SVRA. The B Sedan class has just blown up with uh, Troy Ormish and the Toyo Tires 2 5 Challenge. Well, that Corvette is trying desperately to get past the number five, but can't do it. And this has been a nice little battle as they dive into Mission Food Sunset. Time running out. Just a few more laps to go. And he's got him now, side by side. Come on, Lewis. He's, he's, taking, the lot, he's taking the inside route now, the outside route. But it's going to be a drag race. Here we go. He's covering him off. Yeah, that's a, that is a, uh, a bigger engine in that Cobra because that's an a, a production. But then the handling and the weight should come to that Corvette. So this should end up to be a pretty good battle there. There's our leader, Phil Lasco. And there's Gary Moore just behind him. But you can see the gap by uh, some six seconds. But the straight makes it look as though they're much closer together. But Lasco, audio, and uh, diving through. Nicely done. He's had a good run. Yeah, it looked like he's maybe playing it safe now. Now, he is leading Group 12. The next car, Gary Moore, in a real Wimbledon White Shelby GT350. I think he's is, catching. Is leading in Group 6. Yeah, I feel like Phil Lasco is something is slowing down. Yeah, he just uh, did his fastest lap to Gary Moore. So he's some three seconds quicker than Lasco at this point. So as we close this one out, 
Uh, there's every chance of him catching him. Now, some vintage drivers are like, no, I'm winning my class, I'm fine. Not Gary Moore. No. If there is a car in front of him, he wants he's it. gonna try to overtake. And then Gainer just trying through there. He's coming the next race. He's gonna be taking his time, I think, in third place. He's got a long one-hour race coming up. Peter Tremulus says, awesome cars and coverage. Thank you, Peter. Thanks for joining us. And then uh, Down Forest is saying Dyson was the best. Well, Dyson is the best. But yep. Rob Dyson, we see him a lot in the paddock, the father of Chris Dyson, and now the new uh, purveyor of the Indianapolis Motor Museum there. And uh, Chris Dyson, three-time championship, trying to start his four-time-in-a-row run here today at Sebring. Yeah, that's right. And, of course, he's up against the only other four-time consecutive Trans Am champion. That, of course, Ernie Francis Jr., who's on the pole today. But man, this, there's something about this Blue Boss 302 I just absolutely love. Kurt Vogt drove it for years with us. Then John Cloud kind of adopted yeah, yeah. it. Now it's made its way back into Kurt Vogt's hands uh, because John Cloud is busy being the crew chief for Wally Dallenbach Jr. and yeah, Adam yeah. Andretti. Yeah, it's great. And then there's John Strauss there. Really nice, friendly guy. Uh, he had to get pushed off of the grid yesterday as a push start and uh, just a he, he was the guy, I remember, last year that lent his car to another competitor so that other competitor could go out and qualify. We just heard some yeah, big that was a tire squeal. squealing there. Not Somebody sure where that light. was. Uh, may, maybe another uh, turn eight uh, squeal, I wonder. Missed the breaking point, but not to worry. Here come your leaders again. Now, let's check out how close Gary Moore has got to him. He's definitely closer than he was a lap before. And what, I've got roughly, let's have a look. I'm just looking out the corner of the commentary booth to see if the white flag's coming out. I've got officially some five yeah, minutes to go. Like he's it. got time. Yeah, yep. so we do get the white flag here, but let's take a look at the lap times here because he's caught right up with him. And there's every chance that we could get a humdinger here on the final lap. And we sure actually enough, had a question from Jerry Robinson, of course, always the competitor. What is the leader's best lap time? Best lap time is 218.755. Yeah. Uh, but that could be ellipsed by Gary Moore, who, who keeps dropping it uh, time and time again. Last time out, last go to 221, so he's knocked it off some three seconds. Uh, and that's why, as you can see, uh, Gary Moore catching. But from above the drone, you see the gap between the leaders, um, and it's, it's fairly safe. I think maybe what happened is he looked in his mirror coming down Sunset and saw Gary Moore way back, and then it looked like he kind of woed up going through 17. Right. And then saw that Gary was was coming again, and now he's maybe turned it back on, or maybe he had some electrical problems, not sure. There's back to John DeGainer and that beautiful Devon that actually has the, uh, the frame from an MGA, basically right. from the driver back. It was based on an MGA frame. Good idea. Devon, uh, one of those specialists making specials. We had three Devons here this weekend. David Zavetsky in his maroon one, and then we had a Porsche Devon, factory Porsche Devon, that was racing and had a 35 Porsche 356 air-cooled engine in it. Beautiful car, but unfortunately he had some uh, mechanicals and, and went back home. But here comes Phil to take the last few turns. Yep, as you can see from above, there's the gap. It's not going to be changed, I don't think, and he's going to have the grunt down the main back Ullman straight anyway as they approach the finish. And Lasco leading by two seconds in the end. He had it up to five at one point. Um, but Moore reeled him in bit by bit. And Tegain is going to take the third, I think. Here he comes. Down the almond straight for the last time. Beautiful day here. I'm glad the wind's gone. Boy, that was a factor yesterday. I love these long shots like that. So now a, uh, a Cobra and a Shelby GT350 are going to go side by side into 17. But here comes our leader. Nice and smooth, bounces over the bumps at sunset, and there sees the checkered flag. So a win for Phil Lasco in his second run at uh, Group 6 and 12A. And you can see Gary Moore there in the blue and white classic colors for the GT350, or are we calling it a GT500? Uh, We're not sure yet, but even, even so, uh, across the line comes the 111 of John DeGainer in the Devon Evolution to take third. But first in his class, first in six GT. Yep. But you know, for me personally, 
when the whole family's here, I just, I, 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 you know, we want to see our drivers finish the race, pull it in under their own power. So uh, Jonathan's going to be able to go into the TA race and his Ron Fellows Trans Am car running his first pro race ever today with some confidence. You know, yes. he's, he's feeling pretty good. And he better get back quick because that's coming up. We're going to take a short break here, but coming up is that feature TA race. And but before we head out, we'll just celebrate with the man who won this race, Phil Lasco, and take a look at some of the highlights from what was a cracking six and 12 group race. So we got underway, everybody diving into turn one, including the number 80 of Seth Berger in the uh, Shelby. Linus Stern at first, and here was the first major overtake for the lead, and it was the 14 of Phil Lasco. And how about this? Too wide there, somebody had to give, and thankfully it was the number 11 of James Glass thinking of it in the roadster. But some good close tight racing, and those classic Trans Am cars also going about their paces. And we've got some nice shots of the beautiful number five, Stephen Shoddy, Silver Cobra. But at the end, it was Lasco from Moore and again. We'll take a short break. We'll be back and start getting ready for...